Hi everybody, so I am just getting set up here to stream some PCB layout for you. Just opening up my CAD software, opening up my files here, and just want to make sure everything's really visible to you. Right. Alright, so today I'm working on a stereo rack mount preamp project that I had announced on a previous From the Bench episode. Um, and I had solicited feedback about whether it should be two channels or four channels, and pretty overwhelmingly everybody thought it should be two channels so that we could pack in more features. And uh, also, I think it's uh, a lot of people just like having stereo pairs of things so they can have a bunch of different things rather than having four channels of one thing. So I'm still in the really early stages of laying this out uh, which is why I thought it would be cool to do it with live audience and at least for me before I started laying out circuit boards I kinda thought this was a something of a dark art um, so I'm here to just kind of show you how it works and what I do and uh, answer any questions you might have about that. So I'm just going to get started and kind of talk my way through what I'm doing uh, as I lay it out. And uh, feel free to ask me any questions in the chat. Um, but uh, Or let me know if I'm going too fast or too slow or whatever. So this is for you. Um, so this program I'm using is called DipTrace. It's a uh, PCB layout and schematic capture program. Uh, there are several out there like Eagle and uh, KCAD and um, more expensive ones and some free ones that aren't uh, as good as those. But I have settled on DipTrace after years of trying all sorts of different things. Um, and so that is what you'll be seeing today. Um, so there are kind of, dip trace is kind of a bunch of different programs in one and the two we'll be using today are the schematic capture uh, which is I, what I have up here now and the PCB layout which is what I've just switched to here. And the great thing about using a, uh, a schematic, or I'm sorry, an ECAD, electrical CAD software like this is once you lay out the circuit in the schematic the program is smart and it won't let you mess up too badly in the circuit board layout. Now what I mean by that um, is and while I, while I do that I'm just going to check my stream here. Looks like we're doing good. Um, but basically let's go to here's the very input of my mic preamp. So this is probably a pretty uh, overwhelming thing to look at here. I don't know how well how good the resolution is there. Um, but I'm going to go to just a random place in here. Let's say where the um, IC4, this is the direct input amplifier, connects to the rest of the circuit. And my schematic software is calling this NET83. So a net is just a part in a circuit um, that connects a bunch of things, or, or just two things. Um, and it's basically what you could call a wire or a connection. So net 83 connects IC4 to over here to the rest of the circuit, which is kind of the output of, what's that there, IC1 going into C4. So when I'm laying out the circuit board, I don't want to have to remember where all these nets go and what everything does. Um, and luckily I don't have to because the program rem remembers that for me. So here we're over in the circuit board layout and these two things are linked. So if I, I can go to my kind of net manager here and look for net 84. Wait, was it 84? Net 83, sorry. And um, looks like I haven't laid it out yet, so it's, it's right here. I'm going to zoom in on Net 83. 
So right now all the pads that are connected to net 83 are highlighted. So we've got IC4 like uh, like we had in the schematic and C4 which is also the output of IC1. Where's IC1? Way over here. So that that's got a pad highlighted as well. So right off the bat you can see that this isn't we don't have to reinvent the wheel if I'm if I'm doing circuit board layout. The all of these lines they're called rat lines in dip trace which is just a great name rat lines um, tell me where I need to put traces and it's really just a game of making these rat lines go away by connecting traces so oops for example um, I can just click on a pad and see as I move this around then the rat line moves and it's telling me oh I need to go over there and see how it helpfully hid all the other nets so I'm not looking at that big rat's nest. Um, so let's say I connect these two things like it wants me to do and then voila that rat line is gone. Um, so that is the, the gist of circuit board layout is you're really just connecting these rat lines um, and making it so that everything connects with everything else. Of course um, if it were as simple as that, uh, you know, it wouldn't, it, everybody would be doing it in first grade and nobody would think it was this complex, scary thing. So, uh, of course, there's more to it than that. But the basic activity and what you can just get started doing is you lay out a schematic like this. So, um, if you really want to get started playing around with circuit board layout, just copy a schematic from something that's open source and, and kind of you learn, uh, you would download a program like this and you, you get to kind of select a part and drag it in here and connect it to other things. Um, but that's not what we're focusing on today. So once you've done that, um, then you just start playing around with connecting all the nets and you learn things like, oh my god, look at all these crossing rat lines here. Like there's no way I can make all these things connect without the wires crossing each other. Um, so I'm just check the chat here. Um, oh, hi folks. Thanks for tuning in. Um, so the uh, that's why on circuit boards we have at least two layers usually. They make one layer boards, but it's been a long time since I've, I've seen somebody use one of those. Um, so I can. I've got. I've got two layer boards. We always do two layer boards. Uh, there are four layer boards and many more layers than that. But for audio stuff, we almost always use two. And I'm using a hot key here to switch between the top and the bottom of the board. So you can see I've already got some traces on the top. Those are these yellow lines here. Nothing on the bottom yet uh, because I'm trying to save it for a ground plane. Um, I can get more into that in a moment, but my basic layout strategy is to try to connect as much as I can on one layer um, and then kind of see where I'm at, see how much I need to break up, uh, see how much I need to route, uh, we, we say, on the other layer. Um, but I'm just going to go through and start routing some stuff that looks to me like kind of low-hanging fruit. And I'll do it slowly so you can kind of follow along, but then you'll see we're going to run into some problems real quick. Okay, so this net looks like ground, so I'm actually going to hide rat lines for that net because I always do ground last. Um, I'm just going to kind of start connecting stuff. Oops. Okay. Where needs to go? You know, see, this is a risky one. This has got a long way to go over here, and other things are going to want to cross it, but I'll route it for now. <laughs> yeah, then you can see all these things that are going to need to cross that one. Uh, but I'm going to bring this one back up here. And see, I already see. Okay. I can do this one here, that's low-hanging fruit. 
Uh, ooh, already that one's tough. I guess I could snake this one over here. So now you can see I've already painted myself into a hole a bit. Just, I'm going to zoom in. Just in this area here. So uh, let me back up. What are we looking at? Um, we've got resistors here. And this is a potentiometer and a capacitor. So if, if you zoomed out, you would see this is the front of the, uh, this is going to be the front panel of the preamp. Actually, I will zoom out. So you can see all of these here are the potentiometers for the front panel. So we've got gain, color one, color two, and then an output control. And this entire rectangle here, this circuit board will take up the entire chassis. So on the front, I've got the controls. On the back, I have this, uh, the audio inputs here and power inputs over here. And if you're following along closely, you'll notice there's only one channel. And that is because I'm just going to do one channel at a time and then duplicate it, basically. There's no sense in routing them both at the same time. Um, so I've got a question from John Misich. Misich, thanks for the question, John. Uh, is there an area of audio circuits you prefer to start when laying things out? Uh, awesome question. Yeah, I do. And you can see a bit of that here. So over here in the top right is the power entry. We've got an XLR to take the power in, a power switch over here. Um, let, me, let me move over here a bit. Um, and a relay and some other power stuff. But just take for granted this is the power stuff. I like to make sure I can run power to all of my active stages first because power needs to be really low impedance, so you don't want it snaking around all over the place. You want it to be like a big tree trunk going through the middle of your circuit, and then you deliver power to each individual stage with little branches. So because this is a bipolar design, meaning I've got positive power and negative power, plus minus 16 volts, I've got two kind of, you know, I got xylem and phloem here. I've got like two things making up the tree trunk. Uh, I hope somebody enjoyed that reference to sixth grade biology. Um, so what I like to do is make sure I can get power to everything first and then um, kind of work with my signal around that. So I've got my big power lines here um, and here's an active stage. Uh, so this IC2. This is an operational amplifier. It needs both positive and negative power. So I want to make sure I can run it really, uh, just like a really clean line to this power thing, um, um, to the power input. And in this case, I have to go to the bottom of the board to do that. And we're already getting advanced. I'm going to show you a via, which is just a hole in the board that connects the top to the bottom. And now you can see from the top there's this little hole. So the, uh, the electrons actually travel through the board to the bottom and to the uh, op amp. So that's where I like to start. And so then I would go through, basically, in, in this case, this is an op amp. Uh, this is a chip-based circuit, and all the active stuff, all the stuff that needs power are chips. So I'm just going to look for all my chips and make sure I can get power to them really cleanly, and then go from there. Um, Hawaiian Freak, thank you for the comment. Love the stuff you make. I um, hope you do learn something here, um, and I'm glad you enjoy the gear you've got so far. Um, so John, I hope that answered your question, but Feel free to ask a follow-up if that raised any more questions. Um, okay, oops. Um, all right. So let's go back to where I was over here. I'm at the front of the board. I'm just trying to route some signal stuff. And I've already painted myself into a corner here. I've done everything I can on the top. Um, so I guess I'll go to the bottom and see what I can route there. 
Um, now I can connect these. That's nice. And you can see the, the these kind of like 45 degree angles. The, the program is pretty smart. Like you just move the mouse around and it it makes these angles for you uh, pretty well. Like you just, uh, well here we're getting into a good instance in which it's not super smart. But um, I don't have to manually draw all these 45 degree angles. I think as you watch it you might you might get a sense for kind of how that works. So okay, so I've routed all these, no problem. I'm just going to keep routing and um, oops, I ran this big one across here on the top, so all these ones that want to cross it have to go on the bottom. Uh-oh. Okay, so I'm either going to need a via here, but ideally I'll just come up with a better approach. Uh, so <laughs> this is... Uh, you can see it's already getting a little hairy. I'm going to come up around here. Oh boy. Um, so it's kind of video game like. Like every time you make a connection and the little rat line disappears, there's a little micro dose of like achievement. Um, even when you know, like I do, you're going to have to redo most of these because you didn't plan it thoroughly enough. Um, da -da -da -da. Um, one thing that's preset that you won't see me setting here but that's really important is how wide these traces are. So the width of the trace determines how much copper is in the signal path and therefore how much resistance or impedance it uh, presents. And in most things, except for very, very specific high frequency things, which I never get into with audio, you want all your uh, signal path and power paths, just traces, to be as low resistance as possible because resistance and impedance introduce uh, what's called parasitics, basically things we don't want to happen. They can cause filtering, they can cause um, a lack of power availability, all sorts of stuff. Um, so I go for the widest traces I can get away with while still making the layout work. Um, so I have my audio traces set to um, 20 mil. Uh, if you're not familiar with mil from manufacturing, mil is um, a thousandth of an inch. So 20 thousandths, thousandths, 20 thousandths of an inch is my default. Um, so the program knows from the schematic layout that all these are signal traces, so it's making them that thick. But check out what happens if I click on this pad, which is a power trace. Uh, I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. It's a, it's automatically making it a thicker trace, and that's because I, by default, want my power traces to be bigger. I go for 40 to 50 thousandths if I can, um, and that's just because I want, I just don't want there to be any stray resistance in the power line. Uh, I want to make sure it has plenty of current carrying capacity, so I just make it really thick. I I think in general I probably err on the side of it being too big. I'm sure that a more seasoned circuit board designer would tell me I could I could go smaller with these things, but uh, to me it's a small cost. It makes routing a little bit harder because I can't route, say, like five little traces in between these pads, but uh, it gives me peace of mind that, that my traces are really thick and beefy. So, um, all right, I'm just going to keep routing. Let's go back to routing ground because I, I, <laughs> I told John that about this best practice because he had this question and now I'm totally ignoring it. So, um, let's go back to thinking strategically here. 
the what all needs power so far we've only delivered it to this one op amp stage here which is the direct input uh, if I highlight the power net 16 plus is what I've what I've called it all these red dots need power um, so these capacitors over here uh, this is like our basically our like power reservoir capacitor uh, it keeps some charge in store for when the circuits need it on demand. This chip over here, the both of these ICs, I am using chip and IC interchangeably, will need it, and the color modules will need it. Uh, these are the sockets here for color modules, which are like these little circuits you can plug in um, if you're if you're not familiar with that. Um, so. Oh, let's see. I'm going to take. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take power down. I'm going to take it. So for the. I'm going to take it off of this for these two. And where's this? This chip, of course, also needs the negative power, which I'm going to run on the bottom. I'm going to run it up to mm, run it up to this cap, and then Ash, I'll just kind of run a little bus here. Um, I'm going to put a via. How is the resolution, by the way? Somebody watching, could you tell me, can you see what I'm doing, or do you want me to stay more zoomed in? Uh, I'm going to put a via here, because I know that the, the uh, negative power line is here. Um, and I'm going to go right up to that. Okay, so now this chip has power. These caps have power. We just knocked out two things without too much trouble there. Um, I'm going to kind of bring my branches down a little further here. Thank you for the feedback on the resolution. Sound of heaven. Appreciate that. Um, so I brought my branches down, now I can run the, uh, the colors out to them. Um, so V plus, go to there, V plus, okay, um, V minus I'll do on the bottom again. Uh, where's V minus? There it is. Okay, I'm just going to end it there and add a via in a second. Uh-huh. Now look how nice that is. It's like on the top I've got the positive V plus. On the bottom I've got V minus. So I got both my power rails running like right on top and bottom of each other. That is really satisfying to me. Uh, but, but then again, look at all these rat lines that have to cross there. So I might end up making that less pretty uh, before the day is out. But that's uh, for right now, I'm happy with that. So you can see our power tree has grown a few new branches here. Um, let's get over to IC1 here. Take my tree trunks down a little further. Okay. So folks who are watching, I'm really curious why <laughs> why are you watching? What do you what makes you curious about circuit board layout? Do you have a design right now that you want to get started on or do you just kind of curious about how electronic stuff is made or um, do you do circuit board layout design? Yeah, let me know what 
what your or interest is in this, and maybe I can tailor what I'm doing to that. Um, so I just did v minus on the uh, on the top. So I've got to do v plus on the bottom. And where's v plus here? Ooh, I'm going to take it. No, 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 that doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> thought I could get fancy and share a via, but that's not the correct power rail. Okay. All right. Successfully added another branch. What else needs power? I see two chips here. Um, so these chips are kind of equidistant between our tree here and the branches we made for the colors. Um, and I'm just trying to think what's going to cause the least trouble in the future I, uh, in terms of where I go with that. I see a lot of stuff that needs to cross over here. Um, so I don't want to muck up too much stuff over there. But also a lot that has to go out here. I'm just going to make a decision kind of arbitrarily. I'm going to go out to our branches. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to our tree trunk. And then we'll see kind of what. Oof, it's so tempting to go right up to the colors, though. Hmm. I mean, so much of this, for me at least, is just purely aesthetic. It's just like, what would be the most satisfying decision? What would look the best? Hmm. Honestly, what would look the best is if this trunk just stopped right here and then the branches went off in either direction. So I'm going to undo these. I'm just going to go with my eye and what my eyes want to see and then we'll see whether that is actually something that the circuit is happy about. So let's do that. Uh, taking my, my tree trunk back a little bit, um, I'm going to I'm going to connect V plus here and here. Look at that. And then go to the bottom for V minus. Um, Now, ideally, I would be making all of my corners 45 degree angles. Just, I don't really know how much it matters, but I hate looking at 90 degree angles on a circuit board. But I also just don't want to get too in the weeds right now. I just want to get things connected and worry about it later. Um, so, damn, that's pretty cool. Um, so now I've got power to all these things. And look how neat my kind of tree is here. Um, wow. Look at that. Um, got my trunk here and branches going out to those ICs. And is that it for V plus and V minus? Oh, no. I have to connect them still to some stuff over here and to these switches for turning on the LEDs. So, of course, it can never be that simple. Um, but anyway, let's check on comments here. Uh, Sound of Heaven Studio has a good question. How come audio is okay to run on those ultra-thin traces on a PCB without any interference when we're so picky about using high-quality audio cable like Mogami, for instance? Great question. Um, so, the PCBs, um, there are a couple things involved. One is that on a circuit board, we're just not running very far. So this, um, these, this trace here, this is a 19-inch rack mount case, uh, which means that my case is probably going to be, I think this is 17 inches wide. So these, my longest traces are going to be like maybe 
you know, 15 inches or something. If you were building a 15 inch cable, you'd probably be less picky than if you were building a cable to go throughout your studio, which could run hundreds of feet. Um, the other thing is what makes good cables good, um, in large part, is the shielding. And the shielding in a box like this is, um, is also being done. It's just not being done in the same way as a cable. Uh, we will have an aluminum chassis here and all of the parts will be connected so that there's what's called a Faraday shield to keep out any electromagnetic interference. So the shielding is happening on that level. Um, there's also There are also things we can do on the circuit board level to reject noise, like making sure um, we have a really solid ground plane um, which I'll get to in a minute, or um, running differential traces, that is, uh, or sorry, differential signals, meaning uh, the hot and cold signal of a balanced pair, running them right next to each other as if they were in a wire, kind of, to develop uh, some capacitance. So uh, those are all ways in which we kind of um, mimic or deal with the same problems that a high quality cable is dealing with. Um, so e the, the answer, I suppose, in, a, in another way of putting it, is that the, we are very picky, um, but it's not that uh, it's just realized in a different way. It's in the case and how we're running the traces and stuff. Um, so I hope that was a helpful answer. Um, Oh, okay. So John is going to school for biomedical engineering. Cool. John, do you have you done any circuit board layout yet? Um, do you plan on actually designing, you know, building circuit boards? Um, oh, but you're also on group DIY, uh, and so group DIY, as probably most of you know, is the kind of pro audio DIY forum where people share their projects and stuff. So, yeah, anybody who's making projects on DIY, a group DIY is doing a very similar process to this. Um, okay, so we still have some power traces to run, but they're two LEDs. In, in one case and in another case, there are two, this um, diode bridge here, which is just a protection measure for the output. So I'm not going to worry about those because they don't, they don't have the same kind of um, kind of like design constraints. Uh, we're, not, we're not really like powering something that's critical to the audio circuitry with those. So I'm not going to worry about those right now. I'm going to call power good for the moment. Um, and then we'll see what kind of messes we made by doing that very neat power routing. Um, so I should also explain, if we zoom out, you'll see this board uh, there's like this other board hanging out here. These are switches and LEDs that will also be on the front panel, but uh, and they would they would actually oops. <laughs> come on. They would all sit right here on top of these other switches, but that isn't very helpful for laying out, so I've kind of exploded them out here. So that's what's up with that. Uh, there will be like a connector to connect this daughter board to the main board. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start routing some stuff, and we'll see now kind of how I work signal around the, the power traces. So, oops. You just routed a signal between two pads of a of a chip. Totally kosher as long as there's enough clearance between the uh, the trace and the chip, or the pads rather, between the trace and the pads. Um, let's ground. Where's this got to go? That's got to go out to the 
Same, okay. Let's uh, let's look at this rat's nest here. So the the way before you tuned in, uh, before I was live, I should say, I laid all these parts out, and I laid them out. Um, as to say, I laid them out, but I didn't route them, and I tried to be as logical as possible. And basically, what I do when I do that is I I drag a part around, and when you click on a part, it shows you everything it needs to be connected to. So in this case, just two things. And I try to place it somewhere that makes sense, that's kind of close to, to those things. It, has, it gives me a clear path. Um, but based on how many lines I have crossing each other here, how many route lines, rat lines, I'm positive I'm going to need to move some stuff around more. It's just, it's just going to happen. There's no way with two layers I'm going to achieve this layout without... Um, some better, more thoughtful layout, so. But kind of routing like this helps me, helps me get to know what the layout problems are going to be intimately, so then I can make those decisions, um, make more informed decisions about where things need to go. So this is a first layout. I'm going fast. I'm being pretty haphazard. Um, I will probably rip most of this up and lay it out again before I order even a first prototype. Because what's, what will happen is I'll get a lot of this laid out and then I'll see, oh wow, okay, those parts really need to be over in this area because they all are connected or these parts need to go over here and I'm I'm like getting better at laying things out that so so I don't have to do so much kind of ripping up as they say but I'm still I would love to know I mean I'm, I'm sure people are at this point and I would love to see them work um, yeah, I'm still certainly not at the point where I can just do a layout and have it be ready to go on the first the first try. Um, so I just ripped something up because it blocked something I wanted to do, and I don't remember what I wanted to do. Oh, that's got to go to power. Oh, that's for an LED. Okay, I'm not super worried about that. Hmm... Uh, Sound of Heaven Studio, uh, oh, okay, so they tried to get into PCB design and were a little lost with Eagle. This looks more intuitive. Um, I would say so. I Eagle is kind of the de facto standard for DIY stuff, uh, which, and, which I think is unfortunate. It's, um, I find it to be very unintuitive, mostly because it has this really weird kind of like approach to the controls where you choose a tool and then you do you do stuff with it rather than kind of like eh, I don't know how to explain it except that I and almost everybody I know finds it to be like exactly backwards of how you usually think about user interfaces um, so Eagle dip trace like Eagle has a crippled free version um, which you can download and probably for most DIY purposes it will be just fine. It limits you to like some number of pins, I want to say 500 pins or something. Whereas Eagle limits you to a certain size of the board. So they're about the same. Um, and then I, I believe Dip Trace is a little cheaper for the full version. Um, and I think that, I believe, so I'll be publishing these layouts as open source just for anybody to poke through. And if you have, even if you don't have the paid version, like this is way too many pins for the free version, but even if you don't have the paid version, you can still open a bigger project. You just can't like make changes on it 
or save those changes. So you could still poke through my projects and kind of see how I routed stuff. Um, what a lunatic, says eagles, rats. <laughs> wow, electricity is hard. It's true, and it's mostly, um, yeah, it's mostly animal terminology too, it seems like. Uh, Marcus, super interesting. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm just routing away here and, and while I talk, which means I'm kind of doing this thoughtlessly, which is honestly probably a pretty good thing for me right now. Because I, like I said, I'm basically just surfacing the major layout uh, constraints that I'm going to be dealing with here. Um, and it's really not about uh, even getting it right right now. It's about seeing what the big problems are going to be. I'm already seeing that there's a lot of stuff here that has to cross. Uh, let me go back to the top so you can see. Um, so as you'll, if you were watching, um, a minute ago we routed the power and we did we made it really neat that's these kind of thick traces here but we used both the top and the bottom for power to make it really neat but um, that means like in this area for example nothing can cross over here without um, without vias or something else without vias um, and there's a ton of stuff that wants to cross over here. So if I had routed power, both of them on one side, I could route these on the other side, or at least some of them. So that's one way I, I painted myself into a hole. Same, same over here with the, uh, the color connectors. All of those things are going to have to go down here. So they're going to have to cross the power. I could, maybe I can move the power up here. Oh, now that, I can't show you that too easily, but maybe I could move the power branch for the colors up here. But what I think I really need to do is figure out a way to route all the power on one layer uh, so that I can save the other layer for uh, for signal stuff. And I'm, I haven't even gotten to uh, grounding, which I'm going to yet again say we'll get to later because it's just too big of a thing to Oh my, what time is it? 5.45. All right, well, maybe we won't even, uh, we certainly won't be able to get into grounding in depth today. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this real quick. Um, I'm going to unroute these bottom, everything I did on the bottom for power. I'm going to unroute it and start over. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Uh... That's not power. Okay, so bet you thought bet you thought we were done with power. Um, so what I'm going to do instead of routing it on the bottom and then going up to this via, I'm going to do as much as I can on the top before I have to cross. Oh my. Oh jeez. Oh, this is this one's no fun. Let's do an easier one. Um, hmm. Okay, this this one's more doable. So we've got 16 minus. All right, so we need to run 16 minus 16 volts over here. So I'm going to unroute these. You know, kind of redo this area. And I want to make sure they're both on the top. So, oops, got to run my tree trunk again. Accidentally unrouted that. Did you ever think when you started getting into recording, someday you'd be watching a guy lay out circuit boards on the internet? It's like, 
so many layers removed from, from your original uh, interest, right? It's like you went from, oh, I'm playing in a band. I like recording. Oh, recording's cool. Let me learn about mixing. I'm watching mix tutorial videos. Bam, a little while later, you're watching a guy lay out circuit boards. Uh, all right, so let's do... Do the minus first. Okay, so that's going to have to be a via right there. Hello, Mixy Indie Home in the box. Thanks for saying hi and thanks for the kind words. Um, and then this one I'm going to do kind of underneath that one. Cool. Now we go, oops. Now I'm on the bottom layer. I'm going to run these over via, via, via vias. And now I have to make a bunch of vias to connect those. Connect, connect, connect. And look at that. Now we've got power pretty much all on the top. So the only things I did on the bottom are these little connectors. And that's going to save me a lot of space on the bottom for all these other things that need to cross over there. So see what I see what I'm doing here? I'm trying to get the, trying to clear up the bottom of the board as much as I can. Um, okay, this one looks like it's going to be a little bit easier to do. Just cross the trace. You see here I've got two yellow traces on top of each other. We can't have that. So i got to unroute that one, do it on the bottom. Uh, I'll get to that later. Do, 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 do. So look at that. Okay, so now this problem I identified before of all this stuff up here that has to connect to all this stuff down here. Now I'm, I'm much more freed up on the bottom of the board. Look at, go to the bottom of the board. <laughs> okay, look at all this space. So if I just grab a random thing from up here, now it, now it can... Uh, now it can connect down here. So that, that worked. That's great. Um, now one thing you might be thinking is, well, if there's all this stuff up here that has to connect down here, why not just move all that stuff down there? And I would say that's a good idea. That might be worth looking into because there are more connections that need to be made down here than there are up here. See, it looks like there's only two things. If I move this down here, there's only two rat lines that have to cross down here. If I move it back up here, there's like uh, five. Um, so, hey, that was a good idea. <laughs> Maybe I should do that. Um, that's going to take a little bit of uh, scooching stuff around, so I won't do it. Oh, heck, I'll do it live. Um, it means I'm going to scoot this stuff up to make room up and over to make room for it. It's going to mess up all my beautiful traces. Uh, oh, 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 jeez. This is the fun, fun part. I thought I could make it all look easy and not wrestle with the software, but getting the real raw CAD layout life here. Um, okay, that's going to go there. And now here's the scoop. Here's this stuff. It's got to come down here. Uh, I'm going to put it like right here just for now. Unroute this stuff I did earlier. 
and voila. Uh, oh, well, there are four things that need to be connected, but I, we still gained a little bit of, uh, a little bit of simplicity. Um, so let's see what what needs to be done there? Oh, those things have to go. Oh, those had to go to the switch anyway. Um, so that's where I'm at now. Man, okay, what's next? So we basically, oh, we haven't figured out power for everything yet. Um, unwrap the segment. I'm going to. Um, make all this power stuff on top as well. And that means what I'm going to do is run some vias, run some stuff on the bottom, connect that to that. Oh, silly of me, I could just move this over here, not have to do, use a via for that one. There's really nothing wrong with vias, you just try to avoid them as much as possible because um, just as a best practice of like cases as direct as possible. Um, and when things go wrong in manufacturing on a circuit board, it's almost always with the vias. So ideally, every circuit board is manufactured 100% correctly, and so vias would be no problem. But I just avoid them where I can, partially for aesthetic reasons, because I like traces to be as direct as possible, partially for electrical reasons, in that it's just good for traces to be direct, and partially because there is a manufacturing uh, it just kind of tempts what is it Murphy's law Murphy's law a little bit okay so now I've got power to IC5 here with no no major stuff on the bottom which is nice uh, I don't know why I have this trace running on the bottom it's a perfect one to go on the top. So, you know, there's a bit of electronics knowledge to this, like knowing, um, kind of having the schematic in your head so you, when you do the initial laying out of parts, you know where things are roughly supposed to go. Um, and having some ideas about um, grounding certainly helps, uh, but basically following a rule of thumb of just making all ground traces as, as short and direct as possible. But really, circuit board layout is not that much about electronics knowledge. It's kind of about practice and spatial thinking, and um, once you've done this for a few hundred hours you just kind of get an eye for like I just did where I saw this trace on the bottom and I thought oh no that that could easily go on the top um, so before I have to wrap up I have about five minutes left let me show you what I do for grounding so none of the ground in a circuit is an all-important thing especially for noise so it's um, it gets its own special kind of trace which is called a pore um, which is named be, it's named that because it kind of looks like you just poured a bunch of copper um, so I'm doing place copper pour I have these kind of default values set I'm not going to worry about that but what's important is I'm setting that this pore will be connected to a ground that is audio ground so uh, when I push OK, mm, board cutouts, higher priority. Oh, OK, I've got to move this in a bit. Um, let's 
just do a smaller pour. It'll be easier on my little MacBook Air too. Um, connectivity, a ground, poured. What are these high priority objects it's talking about? Um, this is embarrassing. Let's try that. Ah, what is it talking about? High priority objects. Let's try that. Oh my god. Now right, let's go to the top. Let's try one on the top. So basically, what should be happening is that when I when I push pour. It just fills everything that's not currently filled with copper with copper and it connects anything that should be connected to ground. Um, oh my god, what the heck are you talking about? Let me open up another design. Here is a um, a finished design this is the OLA5 optical compressor motherboard and I'm just gonna hide a bunch of stuff here to make it clear what's going on um, so I'm just gonna show the bottom here so bottom silk and don't show the pores. Okay, so these are all my traces on the bottom. And what I've done here is I tried to follow this strategy of making the bottom as open as possible so I could fill it with a ground plane. And even though there's a lot, I'm gonna hide the top. Even though there are a good number of traces here and a lot of pads, this is actually pretty good, pretty empty by my standards. So what I did is I made this copper pour. So if we take something that should be connected to ground, let me hide the copper pour again, like this, um, there's these pads here. All these red pads are ground. And when I pour it, you see there are these little uh, kind of spokes connecting those all to this huge plane and it's basically just a quick and easy way to to make sure there's really good connections for all the ground pads. Um, so that is circuit board layout in a in a bit of a nutshell. Um, I will I think I'll just keep doing this. It's also a good way to make me uh, force myself to do my circuit board layout projects. So um, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I hope this was helpful, and um, yeah, please check the uh, the Facebook and stuff for the next time I'll be doing this. And thanks for tuning in, and thanks for the questions, everybody. I appreciate it.